morning, Lighthouse Baptist Church D groups. Uh, so excited to have you join us this morning as we jump back into the Word of God and looking at our February uh, study on the Word of God. Let's pray before we get into this. Uh, one thing I would encourage you to do is every time you get into studying the Bible, just take a moment and pray. Uh, we only understand the truths of God when God reveals those things to us through His Scriptures and the Holy Spirit opens our understanding to that. And so uh, let's just take a moment and ask God's blessing as we jump in. Father, thank you for this morning, this time uh, that we're able to get into the Word of God. I pray that it would be rich and uh, fruitful to our minds and understanding. May you open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of thy law. May our hearts be filled with conviction and love for your word. Bless now, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, I want to thank you again for joining us. This is week number two. If you didn't get week number one, you can go back and check that out. Those resources are online. And so if you have your paper, go ahead and uh, pull that out and we'll begin to walk through that. Today we're going to be looking at uh, the inspiration of Scripture. Uh, we want to ask the question, uh, does it matter who wrote the Bible and why does it matter? Uh, our key passage is 2 Timothy 3.16. That's at the very top there. Uh, if you would read along with me, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness. And so, uh, again, going back to the question, does it matter who wrote the Bible and why does that matter? Uh, I would ask the question, can man be wrong? Uh, can man be deceitful? Can man tell a lie? Can man also think that he's right and just be absolutely wrong? I'm sure that's happened to you as well as it's happened to me before where we thought we were right about something we found out we were wrong. Uh, so man can be uh, off. Uh, the question is, can God be wrong? Can God tell a lie? Can God uh, misconstrue truth? And the answer to that is no. Uh, and so uh, based on a scale of 1 to 100%, ask yourself the question, how much knowledge of all things actual and possible from an eternity past, present, and future, do you have? Could anybody write a test that you could not answer all the questions on? Is, there, is, is it possible that a physicist could write down 100 questions that you couldn't answer one question, or an uh, aeronautical engineer, or someone like that? And so uh, the answer is yes. There are, uh, there are a lot of things that we don't know, and on a scale of 1 to 100%, we probably have far less than 1% of knowledge of all things. And so. Um, would you be comfortable basing truth upon someone who has less than 1% of knowledge? And the answer is no. That's a very small island to stand upon to declare absolute truth. On the other hand, how much knowledge does God have? Well, the Bible tells us in Psalm 147, verse 5, Great is the Lord and of great understanding. Uh, great is the Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. God is what's known as uh, being all-knowing. It's, it's the word omniscient. He knows all things, actual, possible, past, present, and future, effortlessly. He knows all things equally well. And so uh, would, would you be willing to base uh, your eternity on less than 1% of knowledge? I mean, if, if you have less than 1% of knowledge, there's a 99 plus percent chance you could be wrong or 99% chance of other things that you don't know about. But when we come to God, we can, we can trust Him because He has all knowledge and He understands. And so, if man wrote the Bible, there, what worries would there be then? The great worry would be it would be filled with errors, it would be filled with mistakes. But if God is the author, then we know we can trust the Bible. And the question is, uh, who authored the Bible? Listen, how you view the Bible will determine how you live your life. If you believe the Word of God has errors, that it was written by man, then, then, then it'll affect you like any other book in the world, uh, have very little impact. But if you believe this is the authorized Word of God that He wrote down for us, that we might have His truths, then it will affect your life in such a manner. And so, if God's Word is so vitally important to us, if it is that rock of foundation for our lives, <clears throat> Who do you think might try to cause you to doubt it, to uh, question the Word of God? And the answer to that would be simple. It would be Satan, right? In Genesis chapter 3, do you remember when Adam and Eve were in the garden and, and uh, Satan, the first thing he came to, uh, the first thing he ever said, the first question that was ever posed that we know of in history <clears throat> was found in Genesis 3 when Satan came to Eve and says, Yea, hath God said? The first thing that... Uh, Satan began to question and attack was the validity of God's word and the trustworthiness of those statements. 
And so Satan desires to uh, challenge the Word of God, to question the Word of God, and cause us finally to doubt the Word of God. In Luke chapter 8, verse 11 through 12, the Bible says uh, that the sower takes the Word of God like a sower and throws that so seed onto soil, which is the heart of man. And it says, Satan is the one who tries to come and snatch the Word of God out of people's hearts. That's what he desires to do. And so today I want to just build some confidence in your heart about the Word of God to really encourage you that uh, you can trust the Bible. I'm, I'm a questioning guy. I'm the guy that asks probably as many questions as anybody about how I can trust the Bible. And uh, this book has reaffirmed to me over and over throughout all the years that I, the more I study it, the more I've learned to be able to trust it. It's so wonderful. And so who is the author of the Bible, God or man? Sometimes people argue that the Bible is not God's word. Men wrote what they wanted to write. And so how do you respond to that? Uh, let me ask you a question. Just because you physically write something, does that mean you're the author of that writing? I'll give you an example. If my hand were broke and I ask you, can you write this letter for me to my grandmother because uh, I'm not able to do that and, and, and you began to write down, but I dictated to you what you were to write down, who would be the author of that letter? It would be me. You would simply be the scribe, the person that wrote that down. And so according to the Bible, is that what God did? Were these men writing what they wanted to write or did they write what God said for them to write. So let's go down on your paper there. It says, what does biblical inspiration mean? What does it mean? Well, the definition there says inspiration refers to the supernatural guidance of the writers of scripture by the spirit of God so that what they wrote was the divine word of God recorded accurately, reliably, and without any error. There are two elements to inspiration. One, man did not author the scriptures. It's not what man came up with. Secondly, God is the one who authored the scriptures. He's the one who defined what would be written. Number th the next thought on there says biblical evidence of the inspiration of scripture. Uh, how, do you see, uh, how do you see that God inspired the scripture according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17? So if you have your Bible there, let's look at a couple of those verses. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. These are some of the most important verses for you to know. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that's our memory verse, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So when you look at that, you ask the question, who inspired the scripture? And we find in verse 16, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of who? of God, the blank there. Uh, I don't think you have a blank, but that would be, a, that would be the answer to that question. Uh, what does inspiration of God mean? It's a Greek word, theophneustos. It literally means God breathed out. Uh, this is the writing of God. This God, it doesn't mean like inspiration, the idea that we think of inspired, like somebody inspired me or encouraged me to do something. This is God's supernatural providential hand of moving upon these authors of scripture. The men who wrote were merely the hands that God used to write his words down. And how much of the scriptures claim to be inspired by God, authored by God. Verse 16 says, all, it's a little Greek word, pasa, means the entirety of it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. If all scriptures are inspired by God, does that mean we can trust every word and letter? The answer is yes. And how do you see the inspiration of God in 2 Peter? Let's look over there, 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, verse number 20 and 21. This is a great portion of scripture. Peter is laying down the, the validation of this truth that God is the author of the Bible. He says in verse 20, knowing this first, knowing this first, and, and what he's saying here is this is the first principle in studying the word of God. You must know this. And what is it? that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. That word interpretation means origin. The first principle we must know, he says, is that none of the prophecies of this book is of any private origin. It did not originate from man. Look at verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. He's again reiterating this. The prophecy, the truth of God's scripture did not originate from the thelema is, is the Greek word there. It means what one wishes or determines shall be done. So the prophecy did not come by what man wished or determined would be done, but holy men of God spake as they were moved, they were borne along by the Holy Spirit. 
or the Holy Ghost. So we see here that the author of the scriptures is not man. They didn't come up with what they were writing. This book was authored by God. Now, did the human writers believe uh, what they wrote was from God, or did they believe they were writing their own words? That's a very important question you see on your paper. And it says, did Moses believe what he said uh, to the nation of Israel was God's word, or was it his own word? Now, look at Deuteronomy 4, 2 on your paper there. It says, Moses said, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the ordinances which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. So you see very clearly that Moses believed what he was saying to them was the word of God. What did Paul say? Uh, who did Paul say taught him what to say in Galatians 1, 11, and 12? Notice verse uh, there in Galatians 1. It says, but I certify, that word just simply means I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man or according to man. He said, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul is declaring that Jesus Christ is the one who taught him what to say. I believe according to the book of Galatians that, that, that God pulled Paul aside into the desert of Arabia for three years where he taught him just as he spent three years with the other disciples and he taught Paul what to say. And then who did Paul say was the one speaking through Isaiah? Notice Acts 28:25 It says, Well spake the Holy Ghost, notice, by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers. We see that Paul is affirming that it was not simply Isaiah that was speaking, it was the Holy Spirit of God speaking through him. And then who did John claim was behind the words and messages that he gave? Notice uh, the Apostle John wrote the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. He also authored the book of Revelation. He began each of the letters to the seven churches with these words. He said, these things saith the Spirit. He would say that as he wrote those seven letters to those seven churches in Asia Minor. Then at the end of each letter, he said this, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And so John believed that what he was giving was not his own words, but the words of God. Now, here's a fact. Over 3,800 times, Old Testament writers claim they are writing the words of God. The New Testament writers believe the Old Testament was trustworthy as well because over 300 times the New Testament directly quotes the Old Testament and there are at least a thousand references to the Old Testament in the New. So what we find here from uh, the scriptures is God declares he authored the Bible, the writers of scripture declared he authored the Bible, and so we must conclude that God is the one who is responsible for what is inside the scriptures. Uh, you must conclude that because that's what they declare. Now, where should we go whenever we have a question? Well, we should go to the Bible, right? Uh, we have to ask the question, what does the Bible say? When Paul had a question in, Matt, in Romans chapter number 4 about justification, does it come by works or by faith, his conclusion was this. He says, what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. He went to the Bible. So that's the question we must ask. So if Satan can cause you uh, to believe God's word has errors in it, you will never be effective in, in, as a Christian. You will never grow effectively as a Christian because in effect you believe that God has errors and flaws and that God cannot be trusted because the Bible says the word of God is true. Jesus said in John 17, 17, thy word is true from the beginning and all thy righteous judgments endure forever. And since the Bible uh, is God's word and not man's, should it have authority in our lives? And the answer to that is obviously yes. And so thank you for joining us and uh, continue to study through these passages. This is a very important truth to, to hold to. And, uh, and, and we'll continue to study through the Bible over this next uh, couple weeks. And uh, thank you for being faithful. Have a great week and let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for your word, for the trustworthiness of the Bible. I pray that you would go with us today and help us to be a light for your glory. And all that we do and say, may we trust you and follow in obedience to your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.